Kia ora and welcome to Wellbeing and Sociology. Often you get asked whether the government can do anything to help reduce health inequalities by introducing or creating different policies, or can they introduce different services. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to read out 10 possible policies that the government could either adapt or take on to work on reducing health inequality in New Zealand and to increase New Zealanders' well-being. However, whilst I'm reading these out, I want you to have your sociological hat on and think, are these actually actionable? And could they, and do you think they would work for all of New Zealanders, especially keeping in mind a lot of New Zealand is rural communities? So, the first is an equitable and fair social welfare policy. This could include progressive taxation, comprehensive and fair social policy, and ensure that everyone has a minimum income for healthy living and policies need to be proportionate to different people's needs. For an example, a family with two children versus a family with five children. The second is the government could maintain and enhance social cohesion. This could be done by ensuring that all services are accessible by all. This would require a whole government response and better coordination amongst every branch of government, and that's from a ministerial level, very high up, to service delivery. The third is maintaining and enhancing investment in early childhood. There needs to be visible leadership that champions child health and well-being. Child poverty rates need to be reduced. There needs to be greater coordination amongst all services for children and a visible cross-party agreement that determines the strategy for improving the environment in which all children live. The fourth, which we also discuss and explore a lot further in Module 3, is aligning climate change, sustainability, and pro-equity policies. This could include programs such as warm and healthy housing in deprived areas, to environment, health, and health equity win-wins. This could include increased walkability of neighborhoods and financial incentives that both reduce carbon emissions and increase healthy compared to unhealthy food promotion. Number five could be health equity needs to be widely understood. It affects everyone, whether it is a prospective parent, a child, an employer, an employee, a political leader, or a welfare beneficiary. Everybody working in a service delivery occupation needs to be able to alter their practice to reduce health inequalities. And this point is very particular for us wanting to work in the health and social field as to how do we alter our practice to work within everyone and someone from all walks of life. Number six is ill health prevention that addresses risk factors that contribute to health inequalities. So this could include making New Zealand smoke free by 2025, and that is something that the government is working on as per Parliament's response to the Māori Committee. We could encourage or ensure healthy food formulation. We could label the salt content in breads and cereals. We could clearly label foods that are healthy versus unhealthy. We could include packages of taxes and subsidies to improve healthy eating, and we could have stronger policies to tackle harmful alcohol consumption, which has been discussed in recent years in regards to raising the drinking age to 21. The seventh way is ensuring fair employment and safe and healthy workplaces, as we have a large number of workplace accidents in New Zealand. This could extend even to greater access to work for beneficiaries, people with disabilities, we could hopefully have a lower unemployment rate and we could strengthen occupational health policies, in particular those that work in dangerous conditions. Another way is maintaining and enhancing Māori, Pacific and Asian policies and programs, which includes but isn't limited to health promotion, screening and health care service models that are culturally specific or tailored. An example of this would be incorporating Te Whara into a health assessment as a nurse or anyone in the health and social profession. Number nine is we could ensure health services are equitable. So this is a strong equity focus in the prioritisation of health resource allocation, quality improvement policies and programmes, and improved information services. This means, and amongst other things, that transparent monitoring, smoothing out regional variations in access, and ongoing education and support. Therefore, if someone was seen in Whangarei Hospital, there would be clear monitoring, 
and conversations between Auckland Hospital or Wellington Hospital where they go and referrals to appropriate services in the area. The last and final way the government could work on reducing health inequalities is that research needs to continue and focus on what works and what has worked in New Zealand to date and what could we do. Do we evaluate the policies and the programs effectively? Do they reduce health inequalities? And what outcomes need to occur or do we need to have in order for the government to stand up and start embedding some of these? If we need to look at our mental health status and our disease rates as well, it's shocking compared to our per head of populations in other first world countries. So of these 10 actions that the government could take to work on reducing health inequality, what ones do you think would be beneficial for us as a society? And what do you think could be rolled out across all of New Zealand and in rural communities that would work? Like the last webinar, if you have any ideas, jump on my portfolio or keep an open mind and especially think about this for your assessment too.